Hey guys, I know I'm coming to you really late today, but I just was trying to push this through. I apologize, yesterday I had a really bad sinus infection and I woke up this morning kind of the same, but doing better this evening. So I thought I'd try to do this and get his word out, right? Because this generation, there's a famine of the word of God and we need his word so bad. And his word is Jesus, his son. It says his son became flesh. His, his word became flesh and dwelt among us. And that is Jesus. So this world needs the word that needs Jesus. And that's why I keep doing this. And hopefully it blesses you and encourages you. So I'm going to try to um, uh, hurry through this for your sake. And um, it's Exodus chapter 3 verse 13. It's really an awesome an awesome word tonight. So it says, And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? Moses is asking God this. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shall thou say unto the children of Israel, I am. Not I was or I will be, but I am. God always has been. He says, I am has sent me unto you. And God said moreover unto Moses, Thus shall thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Go and gather the elders of Israel together and say unto them, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, appeared unto me, saying, I have surely visited you. God's visitation is coming. Amen. I believe it's it's getting ready to happen on his church, on his people, on his children. He said, I have surely visited you and seen that which is done to you in Egypt. God sees everything that's going on in our world right now. And he's not worried about it. He's not bothered. It hasn't caught him off guard. He has a plan. He's getting ready to rip the devil off. Amen. And he said, I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt under the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites unto a land flowing with milk and honey. That's where God's bringing us. And they shall hearken to thy voice. The people shall. And thou shall come, thou and the elders of Israel, unto the king of Egypt. And you shall say unto him, The Lord God of the Hebrews has met with us. God's getting ready to meet with us. And now let us go, we beseech thee, three days' journey into the wilderness that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. And I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go. No, not by a mighty hand. And God says, And I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders. Oh, God's getting ready to visit this earth to the, his children. It's going to be wonderful to those that don't know him. It's going to be terrible. Amen. He says, with all my wonders, which I will do in the midst thereof. And after that, he will let you go. And I will give this people favor. He's going to give his people favor. He's going to give us favor in the sight of the Egyptians or the world. And it shall come to pass when you go, we're getting ready to go. You shall not go empty. We're not going to go uh, uh, empty, are we? Are, this bride is going to be beautifully attired. Amen. But every woman shall borrow of her neighbor and of her that sojourneth in her house jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment or clothing. And you shall put them upon your sons and upon your daughters and you shall spoil the Egyptians. And that's a type and shadow of his bride getting ready to leave this earth. And we're not going to go empty handed. And the jewels we're going to have are souls that, and crowns that we can lay at Jesus' Jesus's feet. 
Those are the jewels that we're getting ready to, to get, to gather in the great harvest. Amen. And this is the prayer today. Oh, Father God, you are getting ready to visit your people. You're getting ready to gather your children. You're getting ready to adorn your bride. You're getting ready to take us out of Egypt. But we are not going away empty-handed. You're going to bring your presence and power upon your people. You're going to manifest your miracles, signs, and wonders upon your church. You're going to pour out your spirit upon all flesh. You're going to bless us the same time you spoil the Egyptians in our lives. You see the suppression, the oppression, and the possession of your children. You're going to set the captives free, Jesus. You're going to do the greater works in us and through us by your spirit and in your name, Jesus. We will see miracles. We will encounter signs. We will experience wonders. You will send your former and latter rain, double anointing upon your bride to bring in your great and final harvest of souls. Oh, Jesus, you are visiting your people. You're gathering your children together. You're spoiling the Egyptians in our lives. You're preparing and adorning your bride. You're getting ready, getting us ready before you appear in the clouds to catch us away to forever be with you. And that's the great hope we have, everybody. We don't have to look about at the world of what's going on. We have to be ready. We have to have our, our lamps full of that oil, that new wine of the Holy Ghost and be ready and waiting, anxious to see our bridegroom. Amen. Romans eleven twenty two. it says, Behold, therefore, the goodness and the severity of God at the same time on them which fell severity, but toward thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness. Otherwise thou sh also shall be cut off. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in. He's talking about his Jewish people. Amen. Our Jewish brothers and sisters, if they will believe in Jesus, that he's their Messiah, they'll be grafted back in. For God is able to graft them in again, it says. Hosea 6, 1, one of my favorite scriptures. Come and let us return unto the Lord. He's waiting for us, isn't he? For he is torn and he will heal us. He is smitten and he will bind us up. After two days will he revive us. We're at the end of that two days since Jesus was born. 2,000 years. Or a thousand years is like a day. A day is like a thousand years. We're coming in towards the end of that second day. Amen. It says, then, then shall we know. Let me read that again. After two days will he revive us. In the third day he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. There's that if again. His going forth is prepared as the morning and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rain into the earth. Joel 2.23, be glad then, ye children of Zion, be glad, rejoice. We have a lot to be thankful for and joyful about, amen, and uh, anticipating and expecting. We have a great hope and a great future. It says, rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause, God's going to cause us to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. And I know this is talking about the Hebrew calendar, but we're in the first month, aren't we, on our calendar. And I'm expecting and looking forward to that outpouring. Every service, I pray it's going to happen. And I believe it's getting ready to. We just have a couple more, Acts two seventeen, And it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. That's what we're doing right now. We're prophesying about the great things that's getting ready to happen. Amen. That God has told us in his word. 
and I will show wonders. There it is in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever, that's all he's saying, whosoever will call upon his name, believe in his heart, confess with his mouth that Jesus is his Lord and Savior or her Lord and Savior shall be saved and shall experience and encounter this great future he has in store for us. Amen. Matthew 25, 1, it says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were woolish. Foolish, sorry. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their lamps with their lamps. I'm sorry, the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. I'm crying that out to you tonight. The bridegroom cometh. Go you out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, to prepare themselves, it was too late. The bridegroom came, and they that were ready, that's the word right there. God's getting us ready, whosoever will, amen. They that were ready went in with him to the marriage. And the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Amen. And those five foolish virgins would have to go through the tribulation period. Amen. Which is coming. He's, there's there's a, a hope and a future for his people, but there's a great destruction coming for the world that doesn't know him. 1 Thessalonians 4.14, to those who know Jesus and those that Jesus know personally, intimately as his bride, he's coming for. It says, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, if we're saved, if we're born again, and believe that Jesus died and rose again and confess with our mouth that he's our Lord and Savior. Even so, them also which sleep in Jesus, not all those that sleep, that means die, in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And that is our great hope, our great future, our great promise from our great God and King and Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, our soon coming bridegroom. And I just pray that this encouraged you tonight, that God's not finished. He's getting ready to visit us. He's getting ready to pour out his spirit upon his servants. Amen. And we're going to do the greater works in his name. And we're going to gather in his people. And they're going to be um, drawn to his presence and his power in his anointing and his glory the bugs are always drawn to the light and his light is going to shine in us greatly in this last hour to bring in this great and final harvest of souls and you can be a part of it and i want to be a part of it and it's going to be awesome we just have to keep focusing our attention on him and he will bring it to pass and i love you all and i hope you have a great 
rest of the evening and a great weekend. Sorry this is coming to you so late. And we love you. And Lord willing, we'll do this again tomorrow, okay? God bless. Goodbye. Goodbye. Love you. Bye-bye.